Well, all Hashiras in the show stand out due to their quirks and unique appearances, the one who builds the most tension is the Wind Hashira, Sanemi Shinizugawa. We know he's strong, rude, aggressive, all of this and more, but unfortunately, we're yet to see him in battle in the anime adaptation, barring a filler scene in the Hashira training arc. The manga, however, has shed enough light on the Wind Hashira's prowess, with him engaging in a tremendous battle against the upper rank one. But there's a lot going on with this character. There is more to his aggressiveness than meets the eye. There's a reason why he has become so strong, and then there's the situation with his brother, Genya, whom he continues to dismiss. In this video, we'll discuss all the details about Sanemi's personality, abilities, and life to understand him better, and here's your warning, this video is going to dive deep into the events of the manga, so it's gonna be full of spoilers. Origins, a disastrous incident and becoming a Hashira. Sanemi's traumatic life. Sanemi had a really, really, really rough life. He was the eldest son among seven children, and the patriarch of the Shinazagawa family was extremely abusive. He would lash out at the kids, he would lash out at his wife, and he would behave the same way outside as well. While his family couldn't act against him, the people he mistreated outside were in the position to do so. Naturally, a man with a grudge against Sanami's father ended up stabbing him to death. Following this, Sanami and his brother Genya decided to become the men of the house and take care of their mother and siblings. Life wasn't the best, but with the abusive father dead, it was far from being the worst. But this was the calm before the storm. One night, Sanami realized that his mother was yet to come home. Worried, he went out to look for her and eventually found her. She had been turned into a demon who rushed to the Shinazagawa household and slaughtered five of Sanami's siblings, leaving him and Genya the only survivors. Sanami lied to Genya, claiming they had been attacked by a wolf to protect his younger brother from the painful truth. Soon, the mother demon tried to kill Genya, but Sanami jumped in, tackling the demon, formerly his mother, through the window and down into the street. He had a knife in his hand to attack her with, but it wasn't enough to defeat a demon who had just gotten nourishment from eating five humans. As the two fought, the mother demon left two large scars across his face, splitting his skin wide open. The thing about Sanami, though, was that he had Marechi blood, which is a fictional blood type in Demon Slayer that demons are particularly into. It is believed that a human with Marechi blood provided the same amount of nutrition as a hundred regular humans. Being exposed to Sanami's blood disoriented the demon, almost making them high. This created an opening for Sanami to cut her down. Genya arrived on the scene only to find Sanami and the corpse of their mother lying dead. He realized that the wolf Sanami had mentioned was their mother who had become a demon. Unable to process the information and deal with the ensuing trauma, he screamed and accused Sanami of murdering their mother. Eventually, Sanami abandoned Genya and, being a demon hunter, acted on his own to the point of laying his life on the line, all while being oblivious to the existence of demon slayers or Nichiren swords. Instead, he would use different types of weapons to incapacitate demons and keep them captured until sunrise, often stringing them up which would allow them to die with the sun. He continued living this reckless lifestyle until he met Masachika Kumeno, a demon slayer. He introduced Sanami to the world of demon slaying, introducing him to a trainer, which led to Sanami joining the Demon Slayer Corps. Both of them became really good friends to the extent that they developed a brotherly relationship. As fellow users of the wind breathing technique, they even worked together and acquired the rank of Kino, which was the rank right below that of Hishira. At some point, the duo defeated the lower rank one, Ubume, from the 12 demon moons, who was the strongest among the lower rank demons. This was a tremendous feat, but Kumeno was killed in the battle allowing only Saname to be promoted to the rank of Wind Hashira. He struggled to deal with the death of his close friend and took out his anger on Kagaya Ubu Yashiki, the leader of the Demon Slayer Corps. He accused him of happily giving out orders to the Demon Slayers, sending them to their deaths for his cause, all while from the comfort of his own home. Instead of penalizing him for disrespecting a superior, Kagaya accepted his criticism gracefully and addressed Kumeno by his name, which shocked Sanami because he didn't believe the leader recalled the Demon Slayer's name. Soon after, the flower Hashira of back then, Kanai Kocho, let Sanami know that the leader knew the names and backgrounds of every single Demon Slayer who had been martyred in battle ever since Kagaya became the leader. Eventually, Sanami read Kumeno's will, which he had left with Kagaya, and acquired a newfound respect for the man. Abilities and the Awakening of the Demon Slayer Mark During the events of Demon Slayer, Sanami is shown to be an extremely powerful combatant and swordsman, second to only the stone Hashira Gyome Himejima, whom he had teamed up with during their fight against the upper rank one Kokushibo, with the demon claiming that Sanami's skills had peaked. He was also seen slaying a horde of lesser demons in the Infinity Castle, with the lesser demons actually being comparable to lower rank demon moons in strength. They only seemed to be lesser demons because Sanami was just that powerful. 
After defeating Kokushibo, he went on to battle Muzan alongside the other Demon Slayers and was one of the two Hashiras alongside the Water Hashira Gyu to survive. Although not known for his intellect, Sanami can be heavily credited for possessing great battle IQ as seen when he would restrain demons until sunrise before he began to use Nichiren weapons. He was even quick with deducing Yushiro's talisman technique and Kokushibo's chaotic crescent moon blades. Most importantly, he was craftily able to use his Nichiren sword, Genya's sword, and the shotgun at the same time during an intense battle against Kokushibo. He would also operate outside the box as seen from when he dumped oil over Muzan and lit it up with a match during the final battle against the Demon King. Sanami also possesses incredible strength, speed, durability, reflexes, and the like, but you knew that already. He can even control his muscles to an extent, but not to the point that Inosuke can with him being able to dislocate and relocate his joints and move his organs around, but Saname could close his wounds, preventing them from becoming fatal. In one instance, Kokushibo sliced him open, but Sanami prevented his organs from falling out by manipulating and flexing his muscles. In this fight, he sustained himself against the second strongest demon for a long time without a demon slayer mark. This brings us to the awakening of his mark. Of course, in the intense battle, his body temperature crossing 39 degrees Celsius, or 102 Fahrenheit, and his heartbeat going over the 200 beats per minute threshold would be a given. Demon Slayer marks also require the person to be around a permanent bearer of the mark while in their heated state, with the permanent mark resonating from one Slayer to another, which is why no Hashira have been able to awaken their marks prior to fighting alongside Tanjiro. Kokushibo had a permanent mark due to him being the brother of Yoriichi, who was the OG demon slaying sun breather and the progenitor of breathing techniques. With him being around Sanami, the Wind Tashira was able to awaken his own demon slayer mark, which dramatically cranked up his stats. Although we don't see Sanami tap into the selfless state and the transparent world, he does manage to transform his Nichiren sword into its bright red variant while he lands one of the final blows on the demon alongside Gyome Himijima with the Mist Hishira and Genya contributing to keep the demon locked in one place. He achieves this by clashing his sword with Gyome's weapon, allowing both Nichiren weapons to turn bright red, which eventually helped decapitate Kokushibo. This technique was used once again during their fight against Muzan, with the bright red weapons dampening the Demon King's instantaneous regeneration. Orechi, Sanami's unique blood type that acts as a drug to demons. As we mentioned before, Sanami is really special due to him having one of the rarest blood types in the Demon Slayer verse. Morechi blood is intoxicating for demons. It would cause their mouths to water and even act as something of a drug. Imagine yourself extremely hungry. If at that second you felt a sensation where not only could you smell your favorite food, but the food got you high as hell, you would be completely disoriented. That's basically what happens to demons if and when exposed to Morechi blood. In fact, it was so strong that it even affected Kokushibo, who ended up losing focus due to Sanami's blood. Its mouth-watering effects were due to the blood possessing nutrition comparable to that of a hundred humans, which is why when Sanemi cut himself in front of Nezuko when trying to lure her into attacking him, her mouth was seen watering. However, her devotion towards protecting humans and not eating them allowed her to overpower her desire for Morechi blood. Even Kokushibo managed to stop the blood from affecting his focus after a while. A big advantage provided by Morechi blood was its ability to coagulate on command, thanks to Sanemi's mastery of total concentration breathing constant. This would allow him to close wounds and not bleed to death, which is why he could continue fighting Muzan and Kokushibo despite being severely wounded and eventually survived. Swordsmanship and the Wind Breathing Technique As the second strongest Tashira, Sanemi is quite obviously a master swordsman. Unlike some of his peers, such as Gyome, Mitsuri, and Shinobu, Sanemi used a standard Nichiren katana like the average combatant within the story. As we already know, Sanemi is a user of the wind breathing technique, which stems directly from the original sun breathing style. His skill as a wind breather is high enough for him to be compared to the very first wind Tashira to ever exist, who was active during the golden age of demon slayers back when Yoriichi Sugikuni was alive. Sanemi has been part of two monumental fights, namely the one against Kokushibo and the final battle between the Demon Slayers and Muzan. During this run, we got the opportunity to witness him perform nine forms of wind breathing, so let's talk about how they work. First form, Dust Whirlwind Cutter. Operates by Sanemi dashing towards his target at a blinding speed as he continuously slashes them in horizontal motions. Second form, Claws, Purifying Wind has Sanemi light his sword above his head and release four consecutive vertical slashes downwards, creating the illusion of claws. Third form, Clear Storm Wind Tree. The user creates a whirlwind of slashes around them. These slashes defend the user from incoming attacks, acting as a shield that encompasses their form. For the fourth form, Rising Dust Storm, 
the user has to go below their target and then release several slashes, creating the illusion of dust rising allowing the attack to stay true to its nature as a form of wind breathe. Fifth form, Cold Mountain Wind, is interesting because while the first four forms are centered around horizontal or vertical slashes, this attack has Sinemi creating arched and circular slashes that land on the target from above while increasing in size. Sixth form, Black Wind Mountain Mist, requires Sinemi to rotate his body in an uppercut motion, subsequently creating a tornado of slashes. A good anime-to-anime -anime comparison for this would be Zoro's Tatsumaki, or Dragon Twister from One Piece, which is somewhat similar in execution. Seventh form, Gale Sudden Gusts, has the user jumping into the air while swinging the Nichiren Katana. This helps create Gale Force winds strong enough to shred an opponent to pieces. Eighth form, Primary Gale Slash, once again has the user jumping into the air while swinging their Katana. However, the swing is made horizontally, which creates circular wind torrents to chop up the target. And finally, we have the ninth form, Ida Ten Typhoon, where Sinemi backflips into the air while hanging upside down. This unleashes a gust of circular wind from above, which slices down everything below. Personality. The one thing that makes Sinemi a controversial character and puts him at odds with the protagonist. From the get-go, Sanemi is shown to be very, very temperamental, abrasive, and hot-blooded, making his personality and behavior a stark contrast in comparison to that of Himijima's, which is probably intentional on the writer's part. He seems to have no patience, or rather doesn't care for patience, and is quick to lash out. Considering his traumatic past, Sanemi having a disagreeable personality should be of no surprise. As the eldest son of the house, he kind of blamed himself for not being able to protect his family or even his mother, although this wasn't overtly mentioned but can be deduced. While Genya remained physically unharmed, Sanemi tried to prevent a mental scarring within his brother, which he would have acquired from learning that their mother had become a demon and slaughtered their family. However, with Genya being at the right place at the wrong time, he freaked out and lost his mind over the events that had transpired and protected himself by throwing the blame for the slaughter upon Sanemi. Despite keeping his one brother alive, Sanemi began to operate on his own as he didn't wish for Genya to be in danger and wanted him to live a life and have a family of his own. However, Genya wished to fight alongside his brother and join the Demon Slayer Corps, which Sanemi was not happy about. But because Genya couldn't use a breathing technique, Sanemi used this as an excuse to pretend like Genya was worthless, which hampered the relationship between the siblings. He acted as if he didn't care about Genya, but truly wished for Genya to not be in the demon slaying business and live a life of security. No prizes for guessing that Sanemi's dismissive behavior was due to him having lost so many loved ones to a demon attack. Naturally, he bore a visceral hatred towards demons and believed that humans and demons could never coexist, which was mostly true as well. However, this became a complication with Nezuko's entry as she was a very unusual demon. Unable to accept her being allowed to live or Tanjiro trying to protect her, Sanemi tried to prove his point about all demons being the same by stabbing her through her box and later provoking Nezuko to drink his Marechi blood in a show of recklessness. Throughout everything, he showed a brash attitude towards almost everyone, but the only person he did seem to respect was Kagaya Ubu Yashiki, a respect he acquired back when he learned about the leader knowing the names and backgrounds of every single demon slayer who had died in the line of battle during his tenure. His aggressive personality is complemented by a thirst for battle. Rengoku fought Akaza, Tengen Uzui fought Gyutaro and Daki, Muichiro fought Gyoko, Mitsuri fought Zohakuten, but Sanemi was yet to fight an upper rank demon for the longest time, which he absolutely hated. While the average demon slayer would hate to come across a demon of such a high rank, Sanemi craved it. Naturally, encountering Kokushibo excited him to no end. After his fight against Kokushibo, Sanemi had to deal with Genya's death, but went on to fight Muzan with great valor, despite being angry and feeling empty. By the end of the story, Sanemi is shown to act comparatively softer, as he mellows down significantly and treats a now human Nezuko softly. He even apologizes for his conduct back when he tried to kill her and pats her head. Sanemi across the events of Demon Slayer, Rehabilitation Training Arc. This is the arc where a restrained Tanjiro and Nezuko are brought to the headquarters of the Demon Slayer Corps by Shinobu and Giyu under Kagaya's orders. We meet Sanemi and the other Hashiras for the first time right here, where the controversial events between Sanemi and Nezuko transpire. A restrained Tanjiro also manages to headbutt the Wind Hashira, but the latter retains his antagonistic personality despite not being an enemy. 
Eventually, Kagaya Ubu Yashiki reveals that Tanjiro and Nezuko will be accepted by him and the Corps despite their unusual situation. While Sanemi does go along with this due to his respect for their leader, he doesn't agree with the decision. Despite said respect, he goes on to try and provoke Nezuko to drink his blood or attack him. However, as explained by Sakonji Uro Kadaki's letter, where he claims that Nezuko does not eat humans, she refuses to give in, despite drooling at Sanemi's Marechi blood. Mugen Train Arc Not much goes on here with respect to Sanemi, who is only seen after the news of Rengoku reaches the members of the Corps, with Sanemi being enraged as the act had fueled his hatred towards demons. Swordsmith Village Arc Another arc where we don't see much of Sanemi, and whatever we learn about him, we learn via the memories of his brother Genya. On the verge of receiving a fatal blow from the upper rank 4 Hantengu, Genya reminisces on his childhood memories as he believes that he'll die soon. Here, we're exposed to the events of Sanemi killing his transformed mother and Genya shifting the blame for the slaughter of the Shinazugawa family to him to cope with the trauma. Hashira Training Arc Tsunemi arrives for the Hashira meeting at the Ubuyashiki estate, which is held by the leader's wife, Amane, as Kagaya himself is extremely sick. The science behind the manifestation of the Demon Slayer mark is deduced, with Muichiro Tokido, or the Mist Hashira, mentioning the high heart rate and body temperature that leads to the appearance of the mark. Naturally, a Hashira training arc is proposed for all Demon Slayers to train against and alongside the Hashiras for the sake of manifesting the mark. This is soon followed by Giyu Tomioka refusing to take part due to him feeling incompetent competent as the Water Hashira, as he had only been able to join the Corps since his more competent friend, Sabido, had tried protecting him while he had chickened out. Sanemi knew about this, and as it stands, he doesn't get along with Giyu, and the latter's reluctance to be a part of the procession creates a deeper rift between the two Hashiras. Barring Giyu and Shinobu, who was assigned to work with Lady Tameo to create a drug to weaken Muzan and turn Nezuko human again, every other Hashira is assigned to head particular facets of the training, with Sanemi handling basic combat training. Here, every Demon Slayer, including other Hashiras, have to fight Sanemi to the point where they can't go on any longer. Sanemi's abrasive and relentless attitude scares off many of his underlings, with the meek Zenitsu being downright terrified of the Hashira. Soon after, him and Tanjiro encounter one another, with Sanemi claiming that he is yet to accept Tanjiro and Nezuko. To his surprise, Tanjiro responds with how he is yet to accept Sanemi as well, since he was the one who had stabbed his sister. The protagonist's guts to stand up to the Hashira and give it back to him impresses Sanemi, and the two engage in training, with the wind Hashira beating up Tanjiro and bruising his face. Genya also comes in at one point, but Sanemi continues to rebuke his brother, claiming that someone who cannot perform a breathing technique has no business being a demon slayer. As discussed prior, this is all due to Sanemi's desire to keep Genya safe from such a dangerous field. To create a boundary between him and his brother, Sanemi angrily tells him how he has no brother, and if Genya doesn't stop bothering him, he'll shred him to pieces. These words hurt Genya deeply, and he blurts out that he always wanted to apologize to Sanemi for shifting the blame on him that day, but Sanemi ignores his pleas and asks him to leave. Genya then reveals that instead of being able to use the breathing techniques, he compensates by eating demons during battles, shocking Sanemi who then tries to plunge his fingers into Genya's ears. However, Genya is tackled out of the attack by Tanjiro, who then goes on to scream at Sanemi for his behavior. Sanemi claims that his goal is to leave Genya incapable of regenerating like a demon, so that he'll have no choice but to leave the core once again, due to Sanemi not wanting the dangerous life for his brother, which he cannot reveal. Eventually, a huge argument breaks out between Tanjiro and Sanemi, with the later going on the rampage until the evening, and Tanjiro being scolded by the higher-ups of the core. He's also banned from approaching Sanemi, and without completing the Wind Hashira's training stage, Tanjiro has to move on to the next, and final stage. Infinity Castle Arc! The Final Battle versus Kokushibo! After Kagaya Ubu Yashiki blows up his estate to take down Muzan, all the Hashiras and other demon slayers rush to the site, with the stone Hashira being the only one who knows about the leader's plan. Before Sanemi and the others can engage the Demon King properly, they're all teleported to the ever-changing, ever-shifting Infinity Castle. As the second strongest Hashira, Sanemi appears in the battle against the upper rank one, Kokushibo. Alongside the strongest Hashira, Giyome Himejima, his demon-eating brother Genya, and the Mist Hashira Muichiro, who is a descendant of the demon himself. Muichiro is the first to join the battle, followed by Genya. As Kokoshibo realizes that Genya is someone who gains his power from demons, he decides to decapitate him. Before he can do that, however, Sanemi comes to his brother's rescue. A kind of heartfelt reunion between the Shinazugawa siblings takes place as Genya apologizes to his brother for everything. 
This is followed by an intense duel that goes on for quite a while between Kokushibo and Tsunemi, with the latter's skill set impressing the second strongest demon. The demon even claims that Tsunemi is on par with the Wind Tashira from the Sengoku era, which is considered to be the golden age of demon slayers, proving just how powerful Tsunemi is. Back then, Yoriichi Sugikuni, the progenitor of Sun Breathing, had claimed that the demon slayers of the future would be more powerful, and in this instance, his words were proving themselves true. With Tsunemi matching the battle skills of a former Wind Tashira who most probably had his Demon Slayer mark, while Tsunemi himself was yet to awaken it. During the battle, Tsunemi eventually receives massive wounds from his opponent, forcing the Wind Tashira to become more defensive in battle. The open wounds expose Kokushibo to Tsunemi's Marechi blood, disorienting the demon and making him dizzy, creating an opening for Tsunemi to dominate. Using his abnormal blood and breathing technique, Tsunemi causes his muscles to coagulate his blood to stop the bleeding, while Kokoshibo, who finally shrugs off the effect of the Marechi blood, is excited to find himself battling such a worthy opponent. He then moves in to land a nearly fatal blow on Tsunemi, while the stone Hashira Giyome steps in. While Tsunemi takes a break to stitch his wounds, Giyome handles the battle, showing off his awakened mark in the process. Soon after, Tsunemi rejoins the party and awakens his Demon Slayer mark as well, with the two Hashiras fighting the upper rank one in a 2v1 battle. Despite having different breathing styles, their attacks are perfectly coordinated, and they are neck to neck with Kokushibo until the demon's flesh katana sprouts three other blades, with the Hashiras getting cut in the process. Kokushibo had been holding back until this point, but he realizes that if he wants to win against the Alliance, he has to lock it in. Naturally, the battle picks up once again with Kokushibo's attacks becoming harder to deal with and Tsunemi losing two of his fingers in the process. The Hashiras are also reduced to only defending and dodging instead of being able to attack. Kokushibo overwhelms them and closes in to kill Tsunemi while Muichiro rejoins the fight and saves the Wind Hashira. Meanwhile, Genya eats a broken piece of the demon's flesh katana to gain its abilities. As the plan works out, Muichiro impales Kokushibo's torso while Genya launches a barrage of bullets at the demon. It soon revealed that the demons were Genya's blood demon art, which he had acquired from eating Kokushibo's sword, or rather a fragment of it. The bullets are embedded within the demon and sprout from within as vampiric trees, locking Kokushibo in one place while Sanemi and Gyome rush to land their final blows. Desperate to stay alive, Kokushibo launches blades from his body, wounding Tsunemi and Giyome. Meanwhile, the wounds on Muichiro and Genya prove to be fatal. However, the four demon slayers charge at the demon with the weapons of the Hashiras turning bright red due to the presence of their awakened demon slayer marks, including Tsunemi's sword. The combined attack manages to decapitate Kokushibo, but to everyone's horror, the demon regrows his head due to his dedication to staying alive and wanting to surpass his late brother Yoriichi in strength. However, the demon goes through an identity crisis throughout everything due to his incompetency against his brother. The demon slayers charge once again, and Kokushibo sees his reflection in Tsunemi's sword. After having regrown his head, he seems to have acquired a monstrous and grotesque appearance, which causes the demon to have an inner fit, as it was his dream to be an honorable samurai like his brother, a goal he would never achieve. As he goes through his identity crisis, the demon's body disintegrates with the demon slayers gaining victory. While Genya and Muichiro pass away, Gyome and Tsunemi manage to survive, albeit with immense wounds. Sunrise Countdown Arc vs. Muzon With the Infinity Castle wrapping up, we move to the final Sunrise Countdown Arc where the Demon Slayers battle Muzon himself, stalling him until the Rise of the Sun, which is supposed to take place in one and a half hours. Muzon had been weakened by the anti-Kibitsuji drug, and this allows the Hashiras and the other Demon Slayers to stand a chance against him. While Muzon's regeneration is instantaneous, he realizes that the Hashiras have awakened their Demon Slayer marks, which helps them resist the effects of his demonic blood. Eventually, Tsunemi tries to slash him from the back, and while Muzon reacts immediately, the Wind Tashira launches vials of flammable liquid into Muzon and lights him on fire. Angered, Muzon calls him out for playing dirty, but Tsunemi rightfully puts him in his place, claiming that the Demon King is the filthy one. The battle continues, and eventually Muzon begins to dominate once more, with Mitsuri being mortally wounded and Obanai doing his best against the Demon King. Eventually, Lady Tameo's demon cat, Chachamaru, launches syringes at the Hashiras, the potion from which reverses Muzan's poison which has been affecting them. It's also revealed that due to Yushiro's paper talisman technique, Inosuke, Zenitsu, and Kanao are playing invisible and landing attacks on Muzan. Obanai eventually slashes Muzan's arm with his red blade and it takes longer to regenerate this time. 
Tsunemi is the one who catches on to this, allowing everyone to realize that a combined attack using burning red Nitrin weapons has to be launched. Soon after, he clashes his blade with the Water Hashira Gyus, a person who he used to previously not get along with. This allows their blades to redden while Yoshiro's talismans are planted on everyone's foreheads, giving each Demon Slayer access to the vision of their peers, operating something like the Rinnegan possessed by the Six Paths of Pains, where all paths share one another's vision. Soon after, Muzan performs a secret technique which launches all the Demon Slayers, Tsunemi included, into nearby buildings, throwing them out of the battle. This is followed by Tanjiro stepping up with some BPE, Big Protagonist Energy. While they fight, Tameo's cat, Chachamaru, tends to the Hashiras. With pressure from Tanjiro's sun breathing, Tameo's drugs, Obanai's assistance, and help from Zenitsu, Giyu, and Inosuke, Muzan is halted until sunrise. In order to save himself, the demon adopts the form of a giant baby and tries to find shade. However, he is engaged by several low-level demon slayers as they try to keep him in the sun. Before Muzan can attack and kill them, Tsunemi reappears and slashes Muzan's right arm away to protect his underlings in the core. Following this, he demands the Demon King finally die. To save himself, Muzan tries to dig his way out, but is engaged once again by Tsunemi, Obanai, and Giyu as they stop him from escaping. Eventually, in a fit of desperation, Muzan incinerates himself and turns Tanjiro into the next Demon King to live out his deathless dreams of walking in the sunlight, but Tanjiro is reverted back to a human by Kanao using the anti Kibitsuji drug. In the aftermath of the battle, almost all Hashiras have passed away, barring Giyu and Tsunemi. The Wind Hashira did expect that he would die and had a flashback of his life, but eventually ended up reopening his eyes. Legacy and Reincarnation the last chapter of Demon Slayer brings us to the modern era of Japan, that is the Reiwa period, where many of the characters with unfulfilled lives have reincarnated. In this future, we see a reincarnation of Tsunemi as well as Genya, who are both policemen, with Tsunemi being known as Sanihiro Shinizugawa. Marvelous Verdict what makes Tsunemi's character so compelling isn't his abilities, but his personality, as he manages to bring the heat into the story from his very first introduction. The scars on his face create more intrigue, and he really feels like a villain in design and attitude. But it's when we learn about his life and backstory that we realize just how brave he's been, and how he's anything but heartless. Insane power levels are just a bonus. With that, today's video comes to an end. What did you think of Tsunemi the Wind Hashira? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section down below, and don't forget to like and subscribe. This is Wheezy249 signing off, but you can always find me on Twitch. Until next time, thanks for watching, stay safe out there, and have a marvelous day.